Good evening, everyone. My name is Sarah Suzuki, and I'm totally honored to be sharing the panel stage with these, uh, with these awesome people. I am um, here in Rio after uh, 20 years, and it is quite an experience coming back here when the world has once again descended on this beautiful city to come together and discuss how we are going to turn the tide towards a way of life that will actually carry us through. Everyone wants to know what has happened in the last 20 years. How, how far have we come? Have we made progress? I'm sure some of you saw the paper that came out in the academic journal Nature last week. Scientists from around the world came together to produce a report saying that we are potentially forcing a state shift in our planet's biosphere. We are putting such pressure on the Earth's atmosphere, the Earth's oceans, the soils, the biological systems that keep us alive every day. We are putting such pressure that we may be forcing the natural balance to a tipping point, like the one that our planet, that our planet saw 12,000 years ago with the end of the last ice age. But this time, the transition will be human-caused. We have become a geological force. And it will be orders of magnitude faster than the thousand-year transition that happened last time. This transition, the scientists say, and the new stable eco-state will not be comfortable for humans. 20 years after Rio, we have not even come close to achieving the sustainable transition that we knew we needed back then. This is the honest truth. We all know this sitting here. Let's, let us be honest. 20 years ago, I believed if I, if I just got through to the world leaders, if I spoke the truth, they had power. They had power to lead our society forward to a better way of living. I began to get inv invited to more events after Rio 1992. I was invited back to the UN, Rio Plus 5, Rio Plus 10, PrepCom, the Kyoto Protocol. And I gradually realized that there was more to the story. I gradually realized that citizens needed to engage, that the grassroots was where we could really see the solutions, where we could actually find answers, relocalizing, looking to our own communities. We had to get in there. Couldn't wait for our leaders to do it for us. And now 20 years have gone by I've dedicated my life to this cause like many of you. I see many familiar faces I'm, I'm glad to see after so long. 20 years after Rio, the citizen engagement hasn't been enough to filter through to shift the, to shift the tide. Though our ecosystems continue to decline in a tailspin terrifying to any biologist, the growth of the economy the success of our current economy remains the foremost for politicians and the institutions clinging to power. And the collusion between our governments and corporations that we have seen rise in the last 20 years is enough to make anyone of my generation totally cynical. Concerned citizens and activists and youth engage, we speak up on local issues, on global issues, we organize and we volunteer and we put our money and we put our energy in good faith that our voices do matter. This is what I've believed for the last 20 years of my life. My voice matters. But it is clear that the current global meta strategy is to turn everything from nature into profit at a rate and at a scale that dwarfs its opposition. 20 years on since Rio, we need nothing short 
of a massive paradigm shift. If we are to make it, if the human race is to carry forward into the future with dignity. Today it's 2012. I'm a veteran environmentalist at age 32. I've committed my last 20 years to trying to influence societal transformation to a way of life that will actually support intergenerational justice. And intergenerational justice is what we are really talking about when we talk about sustainable development. Stopping the intergenerational crimes that we are per perpetrating towards current and future human beings who will have to deal with climate change and deal with these legacies. I've done a lot of things in 20 years. I've grown up a lot. But those six minutes speaking to the UN 20 years ago, two decades ago, remains the most powerful thing I have ever done, the most strongest thing I have done in my life to, to, affect, to affect people. Since then, I have received letters from people around the world who can't even express how moved they were. Years later, the internet was invented, YouTube, and the video somehow found its way onto YouTube and has gone around the world and has experienced a rebirth. Why? I think that this phenomenon shows that the world is hungry for this message, that we are desperate to hear someone speak the truth, speak this message. We need someone to cut through all of the rationalization that we have built up for the destruction of our planet. And no one can do this better than those with everything at stake, which is our youth. Were any of you moved by that video you saw? Can you raise your hand, please, if you were moved? That video gave me goosebumps. That video is the voice of youth. That video and this young woman standing, sitting here, they are telling the truth. And everybody in this room and everybody tomorrow listening to her will know it. The second reason that people are still talking about a speech a 12-year-old made to delegates 20 years ago is because of the most powerful tool belonging to the human race. This most powerful tool that we have is the power of intergenerational love. As we look back on our progress since the Earth Summit in 1992, it would be easy, it would be too easy to be discouraged. But a generation has nearly passed, and today I am a mother, two little boys, aged two and four months, and I will do everything in my power to ensure that they have the opportunities and the just life that I had when I was growing up. And I believe that everyone here in this room, I believe that the 50,000 people that are here in Rio for the Earth Summit in 2012, I believe all of us will do everything we can to ensure that our children have every opportunity in their, in their lives. This I choose to believe. And because I choose to believe this, I am optimistic for the future. We are at a turning point. We are gathered here today. We've done this amazing project. We are listening to our young people. And I believe we are going to change for the better. Thank you very much.